President of the United States has committed. But when we start talking about things that look like evidence, they want to act like they blind. They don't know what this is. These are our national secrets. Looks like in the shitter to me. This looks like more evidence of our national secrets, say on a stage at Mar-a-Lago. When we're talking about somebody that's committed high crimes, it's at least indictments, let's say 32 counts related to unauthorized retention of national security secrets, seven counts related to obstructing the investigation, three false statements, one count of conspiracy to defraud the United States, falsifying business records, conspiracy to defraud the United States, two counts related to efforts to obstruct the vote certification proceedings, one count of conspiracy to violate civil rights, 23 counts related to forgery or false document statements, eight counts related to soliciting and I could go on because he's got 91 counts pending right now but I will tell you what the president has been guilty of he has unfortunately been guilty of loving his child unconditionally and that is the only evidence that they have brought forward and honestly I hope and pray that my parents love me half as much as he loves his child until they find some evidence we need to get back to the people's work which means keeping this government open so that people don't go hungry in the streets of the United States and I will yield. Okay, first of all, and this is my expert analysis here, damn, damn. This is Democratic Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett utterly eviscerating Republicans during today's impeachment inquiry hearing against Joe Biden as she put on full display the raft of illegality that Republicans will defend on Trump's behalf while at the same time pressing forward with their effort to prosecute Joe Biden despite there being zero zero evidence to back up their claims. Starting to think that maybe, just maybe, Republicans might not actually be interested in defending the rule of law like they claim. And that's the joke about all of this. These people do not care about investigating crimes because if they did, they could at least pretend to condemn the guy who they are currently groveling over. I'm sorry, but it doesn't exactly inspire confidence in your crusade against crime when your political deity is facing 91 criminal felony charges in four different jurisdictions. I mean, my God, could you find any worse messengers for the whole anti-crime narrative than Donald Trump's Republican Party? In fact, don't even take my word for it. They already put on full display that they straight up don't believe in equal justice. Well, members of the Oversight Committee, please raise your hand if you believe both Hunter and Trump should be held accountable for any of the indictments against them if convicted by a jury of their peers. We can take a minute. No, it's, it's serious. This is a serious matter. If you all need to think about it, we can take a moment and think about it. It is serious. This is very serious. Think will about the, it. Should both Hunter and Trump the yield be question? held accountable? I want to see whether you'd raise your hands. Should Hunter and Trump both be held accountable if they are found guilty on any of their indictments? Raise your hand if you think that equal justice under the law applies and if Trump should be held accountable. I think it is worse than embarrassing that Republicans won't raise their hands. They refuse to say that equal justice under the law should apply to everyone. And when you step back and think about then it, what about it's the kind January of scary. 6th defendant? It's Chairman, kind of point scary. Of order. This double standard insults the institutions of Congress that people fought and died to build. This impeachment hearing clearly is not about justice. That's it. That's the whole ballgame. These people aren't even pretending to care about the rule of law. The question was, should both Trump and Hunter Biden be held accountable if they're found guilty of their crimes? It is a gimme. It's a softball. But the GOP is so deep in the tank for Donald Trump that they can't even pretend to want to see him face consequences for his crimes. And that's if he's convicted. And yet, in the same breath, they can sit there and pretend that this is about seeking justice when it comes to Hunter Biden. I'm sorry, but give me a fucking break. In fact, here's Daniel Daniel Goldman spelling out that distinction perfectly. And this is just another reflection of the true independence of this Department of Justice. A Trump appointed U.S. attorney is investigating the president's son. That is pretty remarkable. And you don't hear from the other side a respect for the fact that Joe Biden has stayed out of this investigation. And so I, I defer to Merrick Garland and David Weiss. If Hunter Biden has committed crimes, he should be charged with them. I'm a Democrat saying that. You don't hear any currently elected Republican saying that if Donald Trump committed crimes, he should be charged with them and held accountable. And that's a critical distinction that the public needs to understand. And it's worth discussing the latter half of Representative Crockett's argument that if there's any crime Joe Biden is guilty of, it's that he loves his son too much. 
Did Joe Biden support his son? Yes. Did he merely say hello to the people his son was working with? Yes. Was he present for him? Yes. Did he do anything illegal? No. So at this point, you've got a guy who was in his son's life, who wanted to be in his son's life, who did nothing illegal other than commit the crime of saying hello to people who were also in his son's life, and apparently that's unacceptable for Republicans. Apparently that's unacceptable for the party of family values. Tell you what, compare Joe Biden being a present father for Hunter with Lauren Boebert committing lewd sexual acts in a theater, or Donald Trump cheating on his wife with porn stars, or George Santos pretending that his mom died on 9-11, and tell me again which is the party of family values. Take all the time you need with that one. But even if you don't care about the morality argument, fine. If you want to equate Donald Trump and Joe Biden, Where's the proof against Joe? Where is the evidence? Republicans have now held God knows how many hearings with God knows how many witnesses and still haven't managed to scrounge together a modicum of evidence proving their claims against Joe. They've listened to closed door testimony from former Hunter Biden business associate Devin Archer who flatly denied Republicans allegations. Even today Republicans trotted out Jonathan Turley, the constitutional scholar who offers the GOP plausible deniability on all legal matters because he's effectively a rubber stamp for these Republican games, and this is what even he had to say. And then it was just three years ago uh, that uh, another impeachment occurred without any hearings at all. The shortening intervals between impeachments should be a cause of concern and circumspection for all the members on both sides. And I want to emphasize what it is that we're here today for. This is a question of an impeachment inquiry. It is not a vote on articles of impeachment. In fact, I do not believe that the current evidence would support articles of impeachment. That is something that an inquiry has to establish. When even Jonathan Turley, who defended Trump during his impeachment, comes out and says that Republicans have presented no evidence for this whole sham process, you know that James Comer and Jim Jordan and the rest of the GOP have truly lost the plot. But of course, at the end of the day, this isn't about facts and is solely about the narrative. Republicans' goal here is to manipulate their own supporters into thinking that Joe Biden has done something wrong, and so they'll introduce tenuous claims, knowing full well that the inevitable fact checks and debunkings won't ever make their way onto Fox News. It is an entire ecosystem predicated on tricking the very people who trust them. Although for a party led by a professional con man, I guess we really shouldn't be surprised. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.